Welcome to Queen Deluxe. Let's do some vintage sewing or historical sewing. Alright, so today I am working on a 19th century ball gown for an event that I should be attending in August, fingers crossed. Um, it's called the um, Admiral Nelson Ball, so I need something to wear. I have all this time on my hands, and I thought, let's make something fabulous. So I picked up a this fabric from an estate sale right before I was officially quarantined, um, and I thought it would make this dress just beautifully. I started out with a little bit of design, a little bit of research from all my pattern books, and we got started. First, I checked out my um, cut of women's clothing, which has this dress, which I think I will model the skirt at, off of, and the sleeve, which is pretty close. I end up using a sleeve from a different book. Um, and then I use the bodice from this book, Patterns of Fashion 1. Um, this dress is from the early 1800s, where the reference photo is from 1825. So I end up drafting the back of, or the little bodice of this dress up um, from the scaled pattern in the book. And this is what I came up with. Um, originally, it is um, from this, like you can see the original line there and here. And I extended, I, I spread it out from the center and gave it an inch. And then I was, putting it on my dress form and I had to add more at the top and so I added a little I uh, slashed and spread and added a V with about two inches at the top to zero at the bottom here's what it looks like on the dress form but wait we need to talk about underwear let's back up we're coming off of the 18th century stays which was more cone shaped um, it, during this period we get a more sort of natural figure the bust separates and lowers from the 18th century stays this is a petticoat bodice that I made for a previous costume. I have it on the dress form so that I can tell where the lines and the straps are so it will not interfere with my mock-up. All right, back to my mock-up. So I need to make a small adjustment at the side back and then you can see the angle of the bodice, which I, um, I'm very happy about. Um, it angles back up to the back. Um, and a little bit lower in front. I do need to pinch out a little bit on the straps there and possibly add a little bit of length to the bottom of the bodice here. So this is just the under bodice that the orange drapes onto. Like so. All right, so I have draped one side of the bodice on with the straight of grain going around here. This is a thing that would I would I thought of because of bias draping this um, if we put the straight of grain here this won't bag out but there is trim on the edge of my um, historical picture that I'm sort of going off of so and I have seen some patterns that do have the bias running here so we don't have um, as much um, like goes over the bust a little bit easier so I thought I would try this side with the bias and see which I like better so it has a very small shoulder seam so I have this prepped with the true bias happening here and I folded it back with the iron Well, I do think I like that better. It's laying nicer. So I think I'll go with that. Sleeve time. So we have a bunch of different sleeves going on in this dress. I have a sheer undersleeve, a like opaque puff at the top with a the orange drape. So I'm going to make the undersleeve out of that lightweight cotton, the puff out of the satin, and the top sleeve out of the orange. I found this uh, 
good looking puff sleeve uh, and it looks like this. I think it's just about the right size. In Period Costumes for Stage and Screen by Jean Honeysett. It's a good basic book but it's going to need a little extra kick out in the back because of where my shoulder seam um, it, it's very narrow across the back so I'm adding that little added that little kick out for that section. All right, so here she is close up. I've pinned the sleeve on that I made earlier. So the, and I do, I love the bias side. So I'm gonna totally go with that. Um, and this is the side and the back that I have going. So this will have to extend to here. This is where our seam allowance is. So that's gonna have to come from very small to get a lot bigger, but that'll be really pretty actually. Grand. I'll take this to paper now. All right, here is the pattern that has been corrected. So here's my original line and I have list lifted up the top edge of the neckline. I dropped below um, under my bust. And then this section here is just so it'll go under the skirt and we don't have gaposis. And the back was good and I slightly, oh, there's my line. I still have to cut it, but um, I adjusted this. I'm going to be cutting that off and that'll fit on there. And then I made a little pad pattern so it'll kick out that skirt right at the back here. And then here is... The front bias section that'll be the salmon silk and here's the pleats I left a little extra here just because bias always changes on different types of fabric so just because you draped it in one put it in the other one magical crazy things can happen so this is the underbust line and that side back okay and I got my two sleeve patterns this is the the long under sleeve and here is the puff so I'm gonna be cutting the satin at this line and the cotton at this line there you go ready to cut thanks for sewing with me this week hope you enjoyed it I had fun hope you did too stay safe see you next time bye